What's up everybody, Parker here. I am extremely excited to bring you this video today on how to set up a real-time Power BI report. Because of the October 2019 update, there's new functionality in Power BI that allows you to create a uh, real-time connection to direct query data sources. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do this. Uh, funny enough, I've been waiting for this functionality for a really long time. Um, basically, in Power BI Desktop, uh, you can now refresh your page every certain interval of time. So you can refresh it every second. So it allows you to create this kind of live connection to these direct query sources. But the limitation is on the Power BI service, you can only refresh it every 30 minutes. So it's not gonna be live. So I was actually playing around and I found a proper workaround to uh, work on Power BI service. So this new functionality of Power BI isn't actually gonna be used in this demo. What I'm gonna show you is a little bit better in my opinion because you're able to refresh uh, these direct query connections on Power BI service every second if you need to. So as you can see in this example right here, I have this example Power BI report. I have five orders set up in my uh, orders table right now. So you can see they come from uh, the United States and Canada for varying amounts. We have a bar chart showing the amount by country. So Canada has roughly $290. Well, the United States has 265 and we see a nice map representation here. But look as I enter in a new order ID via this Power App visual. If I enter in a new order, let's say $100 from Mexico, and I click the submit button and create an order, I have added an item or an order ID to my database. And we see now automatically my Power BI report is picking up on that new record. So as another example, if I have a order for $75 from Brazil, we can see once I click submit that we're gonna add a record to our database. So we'll have a seventh order and also we'll see Brazil pop up here in the map and in the bar chart. So if I click submit here, I'm creating that record and we see real time Power BI is updating to show us our latest data. This is amazing and funny enough, it's not because of this update uh, that just came out yesterday. It's because of this trick that I'm gonna show you how to do. So let's go ahead and dive into an example on how you would set this up in the first place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new file. So I'll just take you through. This is my original file, which I will link down in the description on where you can download it. It has an embedded Power App. So this Power App is enabling us to create that order ID and add a record to our database, just uh, as an example for this real-time demo. So let's go ahead and create a new report from scratch, and I'm going to show you how you can set this up. So firstly, I'm actually going to show you how uh, or what Power BI came out with yesterday that allows you to create these uh, live direct query connections that refresh every second. But remember, this only works in Power BI Desktop. So you can refresh every second in Power BI Desktop and in Power BI Service, it's only every 30 minutes. Unless you have premium capacity, then you can set it up to refresh every second. But premium capacity can be very expensive for a lot of users. Uh, so the method I'm going to show you will allow you to create those refreshes every second with just Power BI Pro or Power BI Free. So you won't need Power BI Premium for that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get data and we're gonna set up a direct query connection to my Azure SQL database. So we'll go to Azure SQL. So my server name is dev server, uh, this string right here. My database is dev db and I'm going to select direct query We'll click OK and then we'll select our table. So the table that I am going to be using is called the orders table, very simple. And we see it looks just like our table that was in our other Power BI file. So we will bring that in, we'll load that data. And we can simply set up a table real quick uh, just with order ID. Um, and we'll do the other columns as well. So order date time, amount, and country. Wonderful. So now we see all of our orders here. We'll throw in a quick bar chart. We'll just replicate that very quickly with just our country as the axis and our amount as the value. We'll put that next to it up here. Okay, cool. Now that we have that, we can see, we can actually test um, to see if our direct query connection is working. So we can uh, basically just add a record to the database here. So I'm gonna expand this a little bit because it's, uh, we have word wrap on, that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert a record into the database. So if I were to do that, I can actually just do that 
from my uh, power app here. So if I'm gonna enter in a new record, let's just say $90 from uh, Canada again. So we'll see our eighth order ID pop up here in our live demo. But when we come back to our new file, we see we still only show seven. So it's not live as of right now. So the new update to Power BI allows you to set up these page refreshes. And to do that, you just click on the page and then the formatting roller. And then now there's an option at the bottom that says page refresh. Turn that on and you can set a duration. So if we want to set a duration of every one second, we can set that up and now it's gonna refresh every one second and we see that our eighth order ID for Canada just came through. So if we were to create one more order, let's say another one from Canada for $120, we can jump back quickly to Power BI Desktop and see that our 120 order from Canada just came through. So Power BI is updating every second for you in Power BI Desktop. So remember, I'm gonna say this a few times, uh, Power BI service won't allow you to do this for just a pro account. It's only gonna refresh every 30 minutes. So that's not gonna cut it for that real-time connection. So instead, we can just turn this off. So I wanted to show you this functionality, but we're not actually gonna use it today because it's not quite usable in my opinion as of right now, but it did spark the idea to come up with an actual solution here. So what we're going to do is we're going to import from Marketplace the Play Axis Slicer. So we've uh, featured this on the channel a few times and it's just an incredibly versatile uh, custom visual that allows you to step through individual points in your data. So we can bring in the Play Axis Slicer here. So we need to throw a field into the Play Axis Slicer, uh, slicer to iterate through. So we can just create a table that has uh, some series of number uh, numbers that it can iterate through. So in order to do that, we will just go to modeling, new table, and we'll call this just play axis. This will be our play axis table. And we will use the generate series uh, function from one to 10,000 or 100,000. So now we're gonna have a table of one to 100,000 to a hundred thousand. So we see we have a hundred thousand rows. We can simply throw our new value into our play axis slicer. And you see now if we click play, we would see us stepping through each one to a hundred thousand. And I'll tell you a little bit why I am uh, using a hundred thousand as a large number, but I'll tell you why in just a little bit. So we see it stepping through here. So what this is effectively doing is it's stepping through this random table, but it's causing your direct query connection to refresh. So right now we can go ahead and try another order. So another $80 order comes in from the United States of America. We submit, we see that 120, uh, sorry, when it refreshes, we see that new order ID here, so $80 from the United States of America, and we see that also in our new Power BI report because we're stepping through the data, a new uh, kind of query is going to our SQL database and it's getting that new order ID. So that's really cool stuff. We're gonna toggle on a couple of uh, settings here. So in our animation settings, you can set how quickly you want this to refresh in milliseconds. So really, we can do this every five seconds or so, so every 5,000 milliseconds. So you don't actually need to refresh every second, maybe every five uh, would make sense since the query is gonna take a little bit of time to return anyway. But we can step through this and just see every five seconds, you'll see it kind of flash a little bit. Yep, there you go. Um, and then also, just for the usability of it, we can turn on auto start and loop so that it'll always be running whenever you open up this report. So we'll always have that live connection. So last couple steps, just for this demo, um, you don't actually need this to be showing on the page. So you probably don't want this big play axis slicer in your visual. So we can actually just make this small and you know just kind of hide it uh, manually. You don't want to hide it in your selection pane because uh, it won't work if it's hidden, but we can simply move it if I can grab it. So we can simply hide it behind a visual so we can uh, then go to our selection pane, move this all the way to the bottom so it's not showing. So our play axis slicer is still working in the background, but it's, uh, it's not going to um, be showing. It's actually still gonna be working in the background. So one more thing I want to explain here is when the uh, play axis slicer is iterating through the first time, so let's say it goes 
to step one, step two, step three, it's going to cache whatever the data was in memory so that if you restarted that play access slicer, it would uh, basically bring you back to what the data was at that time. Actually, I can show you that real quick. I can grab the uh, play access slicer, bring it back down and expand it. So you see we're on 77, which is going to be a new step, you know, every time we're going to a new number. But if we were to cancel this, we see now we only have nine records as opposed to the uh, 10 that we should have. If we start playing again, we should see, um, so we see at one, there's now 10 records, but if we turn it off, there's only nine. So for that reason, if you need to refresh, we can kind of reseed that uh, play axis slicer. That's why I set the, uh, the max range of the play axis slicer to be 100,000. So that, you know, for that case, it's not going to repeat numbers. It's always gonna hit a new number. That's a lot of steps. Uh, so basically in Power BI Service, remember, if you are turning this off for whatever reason, go ahead and refresh your page, click the refresh button. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. So we can go ahead and put this uh, back underneath that table. And yep, it's below, so that's perfect. Last step, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in that nice power app I have, just because it adds a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of uh, flair to allow us to insert a record into the database directly from the Power BI report. So in my power apps, um, visual i'll bring this over to the side we can throw in any uh, value we want i already have an app it's called create order and it should pop up in just a second so now we have uh, this again so this is going to create our order let's just create another one for fifty dollars from uh, argentina we'll submit and we will see that in just a second, within our five second refresh interval, we see our new order from Argentina. So I just wanna show you a quick example that this kind of works both ways, not just when you create an order, we can also just go ahead and delete an order. So we can delete where, um, let's say, order ID is greater than five. So if we go ahead and run that, we can come back to our Power BI report and immediately all those records have been deleted and our Power BI report is uh, showing the current data, the real-time data that we have in our Power BI report. So if we add one more order amount from Brazil and click Submit, we'll see a new order ID that's starting from 12 because we deleted those six through 11. It's a new order ID, but we have that new order in our database and it's reflected uh, real time automatically in our Power BI report. So I hope you like this functionality. Um, this isn't actually the built in Power BI functionality that just came out, but using the Play Access Slicer is way better in my opinion because you're able to refresh in the Power BI service without paying the costs of Power BI Premium. Um, so go ahead and share this video around if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.